Quarantine was released on October 10th, 2008. And it's ironic that it would be released that late in the year when earlier that year, in January 18th of 2008, a better found footage horror film would be released. That being the 2008 found footage film Cloverfield, starring Lizzie Kaplan, Odette Anabo, T.J. Miller, Mike Vogel, and is directed by Matt Reeves. So, like I said, it's weird that... Well, I didn't realize... I was looking it up. This came out in January. January is a dumping ground for bad horror movies. Now, you get some good ones, like Insidious Chapter... In Insidious, uh, The Last Key, this one, that shine through. But mostly, it's been doing ground for bad horror movies. This year alone, we had The Grudge, The Turning, I think there was one more. Just kind of, The Boy, I think it came out in February, though. But you know what I mean. They just kind of, The Boy, too. Um, but yeah, just, uh... But this is one that shines through, and it, it, it's much better than Quarantine, in my opinion. Watching this after Quarantine, pff, yeah, the characters are better. The storyline makes more sense, even though there's one aspect I do want to talk about that kind of is one of my negatives. But as far as the positives, the acting is on point. I like the creature effects. I like the, the idea that you need to survive. And trying to survive in this situation. If something like this might be able to happen, who knows? And if something bad happens, you got to survive, right? And, you know, trying to save someone that you're close to. But that's going to reach my negative, so I stop. And, like I said, the actors are great. Um, and, yeah, and just the atmosphere of the film as well. The fact that it's found footage... Works. I like the fact that at the beginning of this, they state that it's Department of U.S. Department of Defense, which is like the government, basically. It, it, this this footage belongs to the government. That's going to take me to the negatives, though, because, and you know, I don't do this whole side to side thing, I just talk about it. But showing that it's property of the government basically tells you from the beginning these people aren't surviving, they're not going to live. Although you could also say that they found they just found the camera. They stopped filming and decided, screw it, leave the camera, and they just found the camera. I don't think that's the case in this film, but you could say that. Um another thing that's gonna be negative to me is the plot about going to rescue the supposed girlfriend. So the whole plot line around this is that Rob is leaving for Japan. And he's having this big goodbye party. And uh, it's revealed that he and his friend Beth slept together. And it didn't work out. She shows up with another guy, an underwear model, to as sort of X's goodbye party. What a bitch. I'm sorry, but if I'm going in to say goodbye to a friend of mine, would I show up with another guy, another girl? You know, someone else? No, that's that's mean. That's that's like basically saying, fuck you, you go to Japan, I'm going to fuck this guy while you're in Japan because I don't care about you, fuck you. Basically what she's saying. And then, that's bad enough, they get in an argument about it, right? They get in an argument, she takes off. The shit happens, and he automatically says, I got to go save Beth. What? No, 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 no way, uh-uh, no, let the bitch die. She brought another man to your goodbye party, and when you tried to tell, tried to confront her about it, she ran off. Fuck her. Man, just, no, I'm sorry, but she's not worth it. I understand you have some feelings for her, man. I understand that. But the fact that she showed up to your goodbye party with someone else, that she didn't care enough to just wait until after you left the country 
to be with this guy. Or just not, you know, to be publicly with this guy. I'm just saying. Like, that's bullshit. And then he wants to go and save her. I would have been like, no, screw her, man. She And the fact that doing this gets his brother killed? I mean, come on. They're on they got to go to rescue her from her apartment. Because somehow she got all the way back to her apartment before the stuff happens. Because she leaves. It's not even five minutes later this, ha this thing starts. And somehow she is all the way back at her apartment. Look, I, I call bullshit. But she's there. I was expecting him to find her on the way because when, she, when he's like, we got to go find her, and they run through the streets and everything, and then and they're going to find her on the way. There's no way she's all the way back in her apartment. But no, we actually go all the fucking way to her apartment, and she's there, unconscious. How? How did she get? Because once this started happening, they would block off the streets. There's no way she would get to her apartment. Let alone be there by the time they got there. It's they're lucky they got there. Pushing through all this stuff. If anything, she got there and right away got knocked the fuck out. I'm just saying there's no way that would work. Another thing is, like I said, doing this, going after the woman who showed up with another guy to your goodbye party, basically telling you fuck off, got your brother killed. They're on a bridge, right? And they're on their way there. And he's, his brother, Mike Vogel, goes up on the bridge to see, to look and see what's going on. And something happens where the, it hit, something hits the bridge and it kills the brother. The brother dies because they decided to go, instead of trying to survive, they got to go save the girlfriend. And also along the way, Lizzie Kaplan gets bitten by a creature because they decided... To go there. If they had stayed in one place. Which by the way. Was far away from what was going on. They would have been safe. If they had tried, if the movie was about them trying to survive. In the building. Which admittedly would have been too much like quarantine. But. It would have made more sense than them just running out. To go after the girl. Who showed up. With another guy. And the one confronted about it. Just decided to run off. I'm sorry, but I, I cannot be on board with this decision. Hey, she's a pretty face. Don't get me wrong. But. And I'm not trying to bash this movie whatsoever. When I point out things in the movie, it's not because I don't like it. It's because I find that there's a lack in logic in this situation. I understand he still cares about her. But it's very obvious at least at this point, she doesn't care about him. Otherwise, why would she show up with another guy and then when confronted about it, she leaves? Because she doesn't care. She's like, I'm not going to deal with this. And she leaves. She doesn't want to deal with it. She doesn't care. You know, she shouldn't, shouldn't even have been invited to the party. And then uh, her other, the other female friend, she dies. Hud dies. All his friends die all because he decided he has to go and save her and yes eventually they get to the to uh to the apartment building they have to go in a different building go up that building go over to her apartment and rescue her then go back in that building go back down and this ends up getting them killed because they go further into this because they can't go back now apparently for some reason and they end up going to a helicopter which gets knocked out by the monster because they try to bomb it it doesn't work for some reason, and then it knocks the helicopter down, which kills HUD. And then they grab the camera, because you got the camera, and they go in a tunnel. When they said they're going to stay there until it blows over. Well, no, it's not going to blow over because we know they're going to die. But like I said, you could say, oh, they dropped the camera, which, uh, you know, they could have done. Like right there, when they fell... And Hud died. They go, Hud, Hud. And you can have some military personnel going, come on, come on. Let's go. The camera, the camera. I got the camera. And then they shut it off. How do you just turn this thing off? Shut it off. And then you have text saying that the military was able to clear the area. And this many people survived, including Rob and Beth. And he's like, okay. So they survived. And this footage is just showing you what happened. Then it's going to happen. But no, because for some reason, people think 
think that found footage movies have to end with everyone being dead. The only one I've seen so far that doesn't do this is The Visit. And I need to review that because I watched it to review it one time and didn't review it. But I need to review that. But they're in the tunnel. They're crying over each other. And then you see this rubble come going in and it cuts. And yes, they're dead. And they have not been able to do a proper sequel to this. I mean, they've done sort of sequels. And it's just J.J. Abrams' way of being lazy because he doesn't want to put time and effort into producing another uh, Cloverfield sequel. So he takes scripts, movies that are pretty much already shot for the most part, and just insert things. Like 10 Cloverfield Lane wasn't supposed to be 10 Cloverfield Lane. It was called The Bunker. It had nothing to do with it. In fact, the aliens show at the end of 10 Cloverfield Lane, spoiler alert, not even the same creatures. We get one creature in the Cloverfield Paradox, but it's way too fucking big to be like the other ones, like the, what they call the Clovey Monster in this one. They're trying to connect films that don't have a connection. In fact, uh, Overlord, or as I call Cloverlord, was supposed to be a Cloverfield film, but they didn't. And they ended up not making it one. Which, to me, it's fine without being part of the Cloverfield world. How, the Cloverfield is about these Nazi zombie things. How would you explain? Well, they said that they used mutated DNA so they could have switched it and saying it was alien DNA from the creatures. And they explain in the, in the Cloverfield Paradox that it's apparently through multiple Earths and, uh, like, multiple, you know what I mean, like, um, alternate dimensions and stuff, and time travel and stuff like that, because they're try, trying to explain how each movie happened, even though they're not really connected. But they need a real sequel, and I, I saw a video on YouTube, I'm not pretty sure, I'm not sure what it was, but... I've heard that an idea was that um, on the bridge where the brother dies, there is a, another person holding a camera. And therefore, they could shoot another film set with the same incident from another point of view. Another group of people who are trying to get away from uh, from what's going on. And you can show the, from that point of view... Where uh, the brother dies, and just what happens after that, and you can you don't even have to put like actual footage. You have archive footage. You can do doubles just as long as they look like the characters. You know, it's a side cool, but it's just connected to this, and you can actually explain what the hell is going on instead of trying to insert it in the films that aren't even connected. And I hope one day we get an actual sequel to this because it deserves it. All in all, guys, I bitched, I moaned, I complained. I'm just pointing out what needs to be pointed out. This gives an 8 out of 10 for me. I really enjoy watching this. It's better than quarantine, that's for sure. For all the problems and the pop point about Rusky and the Girlfriend that I still don't get, it's a pretty good film. So it's an 8 out of 10 for me. What are your thoughts on Cloverfield? Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.